What's up guys? It's your girl River and I am back again with another video. If you're new to this channel, hi, my name is River. It's very nice to meet you. Um, before we get into this video, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. Make sure you guys give this video a thumbs up. And as I always say, make sure you guys put your comments in the comment section down below. It does not matter how you feel about this video. We all want to talk about it. Also, if you're not following me on Instagram, follow my Instagram. It's at R-I-V-A-H underscore J-O-R-D-O-N. And I actually just literally um, stumbled across this video on YouTube. Um, it looks like it has to be like an older video. Um, as you can see by the title, it is with uh, Vicky Winans um, and Marvin Winans. And we are going to just get into this video. I've never seen this video, but I came across it and I'm like, you know what? No, I definitely want to give you guys my reaction. If you don't know, they were married for a very long time. Um, he is a bishop and she is like in like, uh, she's a gospel singer. So she's like in the music industry, um, you know, in the gospel sector, um, as well as, you know, she was his wife. So she was like first lady and all these things. And for some reason, I guess this video has like resurfaced back on the internet. I'm not sure why, but I've never heard of this story. I've never seen this video. And I'm definitely intrigued on how this conversation is going to go. So we're just going to go ahead and jump right into it. Praise the Lord, everybody. It's so good to be here tonight. Um, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to try not to cry. I'm not going to be long, but I'm going to try not to cry. My emotions, I was just telling Cindy, my emotions is just all over the place. I mean, this is so, so beautiful and so rich. And it's just such a blessing to be here in the land of the living to see this great celebration. Giving honor to God who is my life. I love the Lord and I do. I really do. And I just want to say, first of all, um, I guess everybody know by now I was his wife. I was her. <laughs> I was her. I was her. If he had treated me better, I'd probably still be her. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. A lot of these people in the church did not look amused. When they put that camera around, they were like, uh-uh, that's not funny. I am not going to laugh. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Marvin L. Winans, Marvin L. Winans, Marvin L. Winans, Pastor Winans, I remember when he, when he, we got married on a Wednesday. Now, you, that's off right there. <laughs> what was that? We got married on a Wednesday. I had on a yellow dress. What was that? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and yeah, at somebody house, whatever. Anyway. In, lo in love we were, in love we were, and that's the truth. And um, I remember when he quit his job, talking about the Lord told him to quit his job. Boy, you better go and get you a job. You better get you a job you're going full time, full time. You all right? <laughs> but he knew what God called him to do. And he is doing what God called him to do now. First of all, she's such a comedian, first of all. Second of all, um, I think it's interesting how she's displaying her genuine sentiment at the time, you know, when he's telling her the things that he wanted to do, and in her mind, you're like, um, no, I am already not willing to to follow your lead. And I think that um, her saying that they were married from before, already we can kind of see maybe the things that caused, caused the divide within that relationship. Now, quitting his job to preach is one thing, but uh, starting a church was a whole other thing. When he told me that, I thought he had truly lost his back. I said, all righty then. I don't want to be part of no start. You, you start no church. I told him straight up from the beginning. I said, I don't want to do that. Why you doing that? What's up with that? Let's bake some cookies or something. Let's do something else. But he wanted to, he wanted to, he said the Lord told him to start a church, and obviously he was right, and I was wrong. So the fact that he had a vision, right? It doesn't matter what the vision is or what the plan is as a man, as a leader. 
Um, but he had the vision. He had the plan. She didn't see it. She literally didn't see it. And the fact that she's having this conversation within the business plan, literally she's like in the living business plan that she did not see coming to fruition, says a lot of that. Sometimes, um, I'm not saying, you know, her at all. I'm just saying in general, sometimes as a woman, it's important to, um, you can maybe give your opinion or whatever you feel, but sometimes it's important to just be supportive of your man and your husband and his vision and the things that he sees because a man with vision is nothing to play with. When a man has a vision and a plan and is working towards it, all you have to do is just be there and be supportive, um, be his comfort, uh, you know, be there to, to back him and just allow him to go through the motions because she's literally standing in, uh, the business, the business, the church that she did not see happening. And that's a big deal. And here where the problem started. You started that rascal up in my house. Now, you know, anybody who don't be, I'm clean. I am a clean <clears throat> fanatic. I keep a clean house. I love my house clean. And he had our first service in my living room on my white sofa. Mm -mm -mm. First of all, it wasn't but about six people there. When we got finished, I said, Look, first of all, they was crying. I'm looking all down. I'm like, hey, watch that. Watch, watch my sofa. It's mascara. Y'all making mud. Y'all making mud. Come on. <laughs> Watch my soul. Wait, not the, what, not the laugh. <laughs> Wait, what's going on? I was so, I was so not spiritual. It's a shame. <sighs> and he was trying his best to get his church jump started. I just was not doing right. When I got done, I told myself, look here. We're going to have to go somewhere. First of all, we could have did this what we just did over the phone. They had just started doing three ways. I said, look here, I could have called somebody. They could have clicked up. You could have said what you had to say. And my sofa wouldn't be nasty. So she's making a joke, and it's, and it's obviously funny. But she's making a joke, but this, this leads to a whole deeper conversation, a real conversation that there's time that you can be in a relationship with a man, again, that has a vision, has a plan. And you can literally be the speed bump, the pothole, whatever you want to call it, to the plan and um, cause that vision, that plan to fail because of your uncooperation, because of the fact that you are, um, that you can't see it. You know what I'm saying? And obviously we know that's not the case, as we said before, but that's just, like I said, a cause for a whole entire different conversation, but it's it's a known fact that, you know, you can literally have somebody who's focused on something, driven, has a plan, has a vision, and because you don't see it or because it doesn't fit into the mold of the life that you want to live, you uh, unknowingly sometimes, sometimes knowingly, do things on purpose to divert them away from their vision, divert them away from their plan, uh, kind of like you know, help, help destruct that plan on the back end by your thoughts, by literally what's in your meditation, by you being like, uh-uh, no. Okay, yeah, I'm going to help you. And then in your mind, you're saying, this is not going to work anyway. And, and that's incompatible. If we want to talk about people being unequally yoked, that's being unequally yoked as well. Because um, you're literally in one house, and you're driving the boat this way, and they're driving the boat this way. But in, in his mind... You're following his lead in your in in your heart. You're not. It's so wonderful to be honest. I was so wrong. I was just wrong. And then I remember when my mom came and Dr. Locke came and we started and he had offices. And I mean, he was really, really, really serious about what he's what he wanted to do. And today, with all jokes aside, I mean, my I mean, I'm really, really full. And um, a few times I said, God, I, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go. I might, might, might be embarrassed. I don't want to, you know, you know, I just, the devil just be busy talking. But tonight, per adventure, I'm supposed to still be here. I, I want to say this. <laughs> I 
I just want to say this, because I want to go to heaven when all this is over. For whatever I've done, to disappoint you anyway, mm. I stand before you and ask you to forgive me. For whatever... You know, a lot of times, a lot of times we try to blame things on people, and sometimes it's their fault, sometimes it's not, sometimes it's your fault, and you just can't see. True. But after a while, it really don't matter whose fault it is, because what happens is you allow the enemy to come in and break up your marriage. Mm. For the days that you've missed me and wanted me here, and to the young girls that saw me as a role model and then I just dropped off the face of the earth out of your lives, I'm so sorry. Mm. Pastor Winans, Peanut, whatever, Bay, whatever I used to call you. <laughs> because all of our days were not bad days. Mm. I loved you then and I love you now, I do. I just want to say that takes a, I mean, that takes a lot. That takes a lot of courage for her to, for her to be having this conversation in front of so many people who definitely, as you can tell, probably judged her, um, especially being in this situation, like being married to a pastor and then getting a divorce and leaving the church. Like, that's like, what are you talking about? Like, you know, um, so the fact that she is owning it and taking ownership shows her uh, level of accountability, but it, it's also showing these other women who are there that maybe if they were on the verge of maybe like, you know, uh, leaving their husbands and for stuff that maybe is not even uh, such a huge deal. I don't know why, you know, they got divorced, but I think I think it speaks of vol it speaks volumes that if she has to come back and, and apologize and she literally said before her apology that she was still supposed to be here that shows her level of regret that shows um that she feels like she definitely could have done a lot of things better and differently and a lot of women don't understand the value of their husbands don't understand the value of the relationship that they're in don't understand the value of their man until they no longer have access to him and I think that's a big thing even from my channel. I try to have real conversations when I do reaction videos and have, you know, certain topics that we can talk about together because I'm hoping I'm hoping that a lot of women can have that awakening while they're still in a position to have a chance with their spouse and to make things work and to see things in a different light. Like maybe he's not tripping. Maybe it's you. Maybe it is you. Maybe you're seeing things in the wrong light in the in the wrong light. Maybe you're not understanding him to uh, the magnitude that you could be. and Or maybe you're not focusing on him. Or maybe you just don't, you generally don't know the person that, you with, that you're with and maybe you need to get to know them all over again. So um, I like to, like I said, bring awareness to certain, you know, conversations, topics because of this point. Because there's a lot of women who are broken, who are hurting, who are sad. Um, I'm sure this was a long time ago. Maybe she's gotten over it. Maybe she hasn't. But there's a lot of women who are broken, sad, torn up over that one relationship and literally can never move on from it. But now that man has moved on and they no longer have, have access. So it's important to self-reflect. That's a really big thing is self-reflection and seeing uh, things from the other person's pers perspective. That's important when you're in a relationship. To you, it's enough when you ask someone to forgive you and if somebody asks you to forgive them, but it's better when you be able to forgive yourself. Mm -hmm. And I want you to forgive me for anything, everything. I don't care what it was. Whatever I said wrong, whatever I did wrong, any way I turned wrong, whatever you thought that I did wrong that I should have made right, I'm so sorry. Mm. <laughs> I 
I really do want to see Jesus. I've been in the church all It's the quiet spaces for me. Everybody is like, what is going on right now? Should we stop her? Should we take the mic? Like, this lady in the back and this man, they look mortified. Like, what is going on? My life, and I really do. I mean, we, 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 we get it twisted up sometimes, the reason why we're here. And God in heaven knows it ain't worth. It just ain't worth going to hell over. It's just not. Um, I want to say I'm sorry to Cindy, whom I love dearly. That's my girl. I want to say I'm sorry to everybody. One more time, if I don't ever see you again, which I know, but I hope I will, Vicki Winans is asking for 100% forgiveness wow. for any and everything that I've done or appear to be wrong in any fashion. I am so sorry. I'm sorry to Coconut and Skeeter if I wasn't always the mother that you all thought. God in heaven knows. I'm sorry. I'm going to try my best to run as fast as I can to make up some of that time. And Pastor Winans... I want you to know this. I'm out there a lot. People love you dearly all over the country. They really, really do. They do. They love you. <laughs> and I don't want you to be mad with me or upset with me or none of that. I just want you to know that I appreciate you. And you are a true, true man of God. I really believe that. Thank you so much. Let's give God praise. God bless you. That's amazing. Um, I So I hear her calling him pastor. I thought he was a bishop. I think he is a bishop. Maybe at the time he was a pastor. I'm not really versed on like the timing with those things. But um, the fact that she had that, I mean, he obviously had to cut that off. <laughs> he was like, okay, this is too much now. But I, like I said, I think that's um, a big deal. Obviously, she had something happen within her mind, within her heart, that she felt so convicted to the point that she had to do this, that she had to apologize. Maybe her actions were just obviously wrong. Maybe just the things that she was doing was just so wrong that she had to do this. I'm not really sure what the reason is, but the fact that she did that is a big deal. Um, and again, the accountability is important for people to witness because a lot of people don't take accountability. And if they did, they'd be better off um, maybe in a different situation, maybe in a better situation. Maybe they can fix their marriage, get back with their children's fathers, whatever the case is because of that accountability. So let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section down below. I cannot wait to see what you guys have to say about this video. Make sure you guys give this video a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed to this channel, go ahead and subscribe. I do post a video every single day. The time varies, so if you hit that notification bell, it'll notify you as soon as I post. And again, if you're not following me on Instagram, my Instagram is at R-I-V-A-H underscore J-O-R-D-O-N. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Love you.